Hey, good day, fellow STEAM enthusiasts, and today on our bench is a brief discussion of the um, pressed product uh, that has been on the market for many years. Um, this particular example is the Apollo Power Press, um, and you can see it was removed. Somebody else had installed it, and uh, it originally was installed to eliminate um, some water hammer. Uh, this is the original pipe here, and I think you can see uh, the pitting here almost goes through half of the pipe thickness right there. And uh, what tends to happen with water hammer is a little punch a hole right through there. Um, some of you who have a military background uh, might be uh, familiar with the concept of a shaped charge. And that's essentially what water hammer does. It focuses, it tends to focus the energy along the bottom where the water is and uh, discharges its energy very rapidly. It just punches a hole um, in more or less a short period of time. And this was good enough, so um, they cut about here, and this is the uh, newer material, and this was had to be cut out because they didn't take into account the pitch. Um, that's the trouble with this uh, product. It tends to um, allow misalignment and allows the misalignment to continue. So unless you fix the underlying problem, uh, this does not, it solves the immediate problem of the leak, but it does not solve the underlying problem as to what's going to cause the leak. Generally, um, steel resists steam very well, and uh, this uh, this steel pipe, other than the the water hammer, would have uh, another lifespan of at least another hundred years. So, without further ado, let's uh, flip it over, and you can see. Um, this is where the joint occurred. Uh, you can see the slight discoloration of the uh, where the water got in over time and uh, made this work. The main seal is an O-ring. That's part of my issue with this. It's not that I'm, I'm saying don't use this. I have used this, and I will continue to use this. But I will generally, my feeling is, and I can't speak for everyone, but my feeling is that I'm going to use this uh, if I've got really no other choice. Um, and because it depends on this material, which um, is a material called EPDM. Now, it's been 40 years since I've been in a uh, organic chemistry uh, class, but uh, that, what if I remember, according to Google, it stands for ethylene propylene diene monomer, and it is a fairly inexpensive and excellent material up to about 100 degrees Celsius and maybe a little bit beyond, and will tolerate steam reasonably well, but it does break down over time. So this is the construction. Uh, the green is the code for water or steam. Um, and uh, they say you can use the yellow, which is for gas, in a pinch, but generally that's not recommended. Uh, the yellow, by the way, is a, a hydrogenated nitrile butadiene, different material, and definitely doesn't have the... Um, uh, properties of EPDM as far as uh, uh, holding temperature and steam. This ring here is pressed into the pipe, and uh, this is what grips it and keeps it from coming apart. Um, if you look here, you can see where it was pressed in uh, to the pipe, keeping this from blowing apart. Then there is a... Um, brass ring which contains the uh, the rubber here as it's pressed in to the uh, into the pipe 
and uh, forms the seal. You generally have to do some prep work, uh, cleaning off any high points um, and so forth, generally remove any scale um, before uh, sticking this together. You can see there's the uh, cross section of the material there. So that's what you're dependent on. Now, um, Vega, which is uh, sold through Rigid, uh, recommends that any pressures above a couple of a pounds, uh, they recommend using their um, white dot product or uh, white rim, which is a different material called FKM, uh, which is a fluorinated product. It's much more expensive. It is not good for direct steam, but um, it handles temperature better since the it doesn't have direct steam applied to it in this particular case. Um, it'll probably last a little longer, or at least that's what um, their engineers um, are betting on, and, uh, and you are too, um, in a sense. Um, so all in all, this is sort of more of a... Uh, uh, philosophy. I'm. You start looking up these materials on on Google, trying to differentiate between EDPM and FKM and um, NHBR, and you can really go down the rabbit hole as to uh, claims and counterclaims and and what is what and what's best for this. And very difficult to uh, find a definitive answer, in my opinion. Um, Only I'm going to, as I said before, I'm only going to, I would recommend using this only when you can't really do anything else like wet, weld or thread or go back to, uh, um, you know, press. What I usually do is I will use the press connection once and then it goes to a uh, an adapter, uh, either a threaded adapter. And so you can uh, thread a union and then go on to steel so it can be removed. That's the other disadvantage. You bring that up. Once you pull the trigger on, on the uh, tool, which is rather expensive and uh, has a maintenance cost, uh, that's it. There's no, um, it's a permanent connection and you have to literally cut it out, which is what we had to do here. Um, if the, uh, and it could be, you, you could basically stick it in and that someone basically can stick it into you and break it off, <laughs> as it were. And so that's the, main disadvantage, another disadvantage in my opinion, and then of course, because once it goes in, it generally will work, eh, but for how long is the question. Well, I hope that wasn't too rambling. Uh, thank you very much, and um, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please uh, leave them below, you know, down below in the uh, uh, section, and uh, I thank you very much, and uh, you don't take care and stay safe.